Hello, uh, my name is Dustin. I had uh, brought you a previous video about Honey Drive 3, um, which is basically a distribution of Linux right here. It has a bunch of defensive type tools in it, such as Honey Pots, as you might have guessed. Uh, there's a couple, quite a few different ones, um, different levels of Honey Pots. Uh, the main one that we looked at was called Kippo. Um, it's a very nice one, actually. And I have the previous video on kind of setting this uh, this up and getting Kippo going and, and whatnot. Um, so today, I kind of wanted to expand on that. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to uh, start Kippo. It's going to be monitoring our, uh, our SSH port 22. And uh, then what we'll do is we'll go over to a different uh, virtual machine that I got. I had installed this, which is uh, a different distribution of Linux called Kali. This one is uh, for offensive security. So this one has uh, print penetration, penetration t testing tools on it. Uh, includes stuff like Wireshark, Hydra, uh, reverse engineering tools, um, things that we're familiar with such as Nmap and um, much, much more. Um, we will basically just use a few of those things, including the Nmap and um, something called Medusa, which is a brute, fo brute force password attack. Um, so we'll, we'll use that. Kali Linux also has a, some other built-in stuff, including a uh, list of passwords already. Um, yeah, we'll speak about that when we kind of get to that point. Um, I'll show you here. Um, I already have Kippo running on the computer. Um, so you can see that there. Um, we have our README. This is the README here. So this is kind of how you get it going and stuff. Again, I will, I'll put links uh, in the description to the previous video, my previous video, and some of the other you know important links for this, including the link to the uh, web page here for Kali where you can come download this uh, install your VM here um, there was some nuances to setting this stuff up um, basically I got it all you know installed I was having a very hard time uh, getting them to talk to each other what I realized is these machines have settings in them for the network uh, this one here with the honey drive I've had this on bridged adapter so this one is actually um, you know using my adapter on my PC and this one actually is not it, uh, it, it may work with it uh, it works this way so I left it like this I didn't really mess that with it after this uh, NAT I believe is typically used so your VM will have a internet connection to the outside world um, so I uh, just left this one on this so got to make sure that part's set up before you can really do this testing. This is kind of a cool little experiment you can do on your own. Um, but we got our Kali open here. We got our Kippo running. Uh, the next thing we would want to do is come in here and uh, let's see if we can. Oh, I got to push space bar. There we go. Gotta sign in again. Let's see if we can get the command line. We're going to use Nmap here, uh, sort of like we have covered in the past. Uh, we're just going to see what services are uh, running and which ports and uh, look for an opening for us to attack, basically. Okay, so we can see here that uh, we do indeed have port 22 appears to be open. It's SSH. Uh, it's using this protocol here. So that's the one we're going to focus on, actually. And um, what I also wanted to show you was Medusa, or well, actually, yeah, Medusa is the the brute force. You know, we wouldn't necessarily know the uh, you know passwords or, or whatnot to the system, so we would want to try to crack it. Um, there was one little step you had to do first before you could use the the Rock U Tech, since it's like 14 over 14 um, million, I believe, passwords. It's uh, zipped, so you actually have to go to um, the, the folder. 
I'll just try to go back so I can show you here. Okay, so this is the folder that it's in here. CD user share. I'll, again, include this, you know, I'll put together a document and, and maybe uh, attach a link to it uh, on the cloud or something. I'll have some of these instructions uh, to get you through these parts. Uh, and then you just use this command here to unzip unzip that file. Okay. Um, next up would be to actually run Medusa. Okay. And Medusa, we give it uh, you know, dash H and then our IP address, dash U for the user, which is root. Uh, uh, the password list, which is located here, it's called rocky.txt. Uh, and then the port and SSH there. Okay. And we'll run that on here. I'll run it on the root, remind you. Okay, so it returns successful. We got a, a password of 123456. Uh, that wasn't that fun. Okay, so what I planned to do here was, uh, since Honey Drive actually has another account on it called Honey Drive, or another user, I'm going to just do it on that just to show you what happens. Because Honey Drive has a different password. It's a little more complicated. It's not the first one on the list. So as you can see, it's just literally going through each and every password and trying it. And okay. we'll get, we'll stop that though. Um, just wanted to show you that. Um, so next thing would be to log in to um, log in. Okay. And I tried this many different ways, and uh, you may see online if you try to look this up that you can just use the user at you know root at uh, the IP address, right? Well, that wouldn't work. Okay, I had to add this this stuff in here. Um, what I what I did learn during this process is that they use different algorithms to encrypt things. So, even though it's SSH, it can be a couple different things. So you may need to find the right one. This one worked for me. This was the first one I came across. Maybe it will, will work for you as well. Maybe you'll need to search out your own, but you'll want to do that, and you know if it doesn't work normally. Okay, so now it's asking us for the password: one, two, three, four, five, six. Enter, and we're in. We're actually in. We we, we could do whatever. <laughs> um, you can't really see nothing from here. We have to. So we can see the list there. You know, we could we could check stuff out. Uh, as pass. Okay, so we could look at that there. You know, we yeah, you could get in here and mess around. They, you could download stuff and, and whatever you wanted to really do uh, it would kind of be up to you at this point. So, kind of you're in the system. Um, and what we can do now is we can come back over here to Honey Drive and we can get a better idea. I know in the first video I kind of showed you a little bit that it would generate graphs and stuff, but we couldn't really see. So that was kind of my goal uh, the second time around was to really figure it all out and, uh, and get us something nice to look at here. So let's check out what we got. Um, so this Honey Pot, this would be very useful. I mean, this is open source free software, right, that, uh, you know, maybe not a huge company would want to use, but uh, medium, small size business, um, this could be a very useful tool. Um, you can instantly see right here, you know, the top 10 passwords that were tried. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six was tried, to, you know, it's one of the first ones on the list. It also matches the root password, so, uh, you know, I've ran this a couple of times previously, just kind of messing around. Actually, up here at the top, you can see the total login attempts is almost 250. Um, what we could do is we could come back over here. We could actually just leave this uh, maybe running on. Oh. Let's X out of it. Let's go back into the terminal. and uh, Let's leave it run on this for a little bit. Maybe I'll give you an update. I don't know. Maybe I can try to let this run and see if it actually will crack the password out of those, how long it will take. I may run out of time for that, though. 
Um, top 10 usernames. So we've tried HoneyDrive the most, right? Because the password obviously is not one of the first ones on the list. Uh, root. Uh, the password is very quickly found, so we, had, we don't need as many attempts on that one. Um, uh, so yeah, here's the combinations, right? We've, we've actually done root, uh, you know, six times and just got it, right? But uh, Honey Drive, uh, you know, we've tried a lot of different things. And it hasn't quite worked out yet. Um, so we got a chart here. It's kind of the same representation, just in a pie chart form. Uh, success ratios. We've had a lot of failures. Uh, only six successes. These have all been on the root account. Uh, I have yet to let it run long enough to see if it will actually crack the, the Honey Drive password. Honey Drive password is not hard either, so I imagine it will. It's Honey Drive, right? So, um, so that goes to break down by week kind of deal. Connections per IP address, so that's kind of nice, right? You can actually see what IP address connected. I mean, we're supposedly, you know, maybe they're spoofing their IP address, but uh, hiding, right? Um, but maybe not. So, anyways, it gives you something to start with. Um, successful logins from same IP. I've, I've got it from every the same one every time, basically. Um, so, top ten SSH clients uh, used by attacker during their uh, hacking attempt. Okay, so it looks like it. I actually have tried to use a couple different uh, SSH clients there. I didn't even realize that myself. Still learning about this, I suppose. And let's go up and we'll take a quick look at some of the other stuff you can see here. Input, you can get an idea of uh, the busiest day for a week, uh, the commands that I've tried to put in, right? So. You can get an idea of what they're doing on your system. Uh, you know, get. You can see I looked at the, the password file quite a bit. You know, just some other random commands. You can see that I'm no expert, so some of them are probably even wrong. Um, these are the successful inputs here. Uh, failed inputs. Stuff where I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, interesting commands so it's actually got a little play log here Let's see what happens when we click this here yeah I don't know if it's gonna load so we're gonna go back here because I don't I don't want to make this uh, drag out too long oh, that's the play log that's where you can see all those things uh, IP address, and you can get kind of a geolocation here. Supposedly, it usually works. I don't know why it's not showing. Maybe because I don't. I'm not sure why it's not showing me as in the U.S. Maybe it's because I have an inter uh, internal IP address on my VM. And it's not really capturing the external. I'm not not quite sure on that part, but uh, typically it would show. You know where that IP address be located. Kind of highlight the map there, so it can be pretty cool. Uh, get an idea of where you're getting attacked from, and this is just kind of a picture of all the graphs, or a page with all the graphs on it. So I feel like that's uh you know it's a pretty cool thing. You can see this is still running over here, but uh, I've learned quite a bit during you know this whole process of. Um, how networking works, how VMs work. It took me quite a while to actually get the uh, the Kali Linux set up on here and, and, and uh, working right. I have another one that I had set up that just for whatever reason the VM does not does not want to function properly. So I had to work work through some issues with that. Um, but we we got it going. Uh, it's pretty cool. You can uh, you know use one to attack the other. You know, you can set it up, you can mess around. There's plenty more honeypots on here. I just didn't really have time to, to put together a video to cover all of them or even more than one. But uh, there are a couple different ones. Um, I kind of touched on it in the first video. Uh, some of the other ones do have kind of visual representations 
with the graphs as well, so that's kind of nice. Um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'll put together some links and a uh, a document that describes some of this process and and the things I've learned along the way. Uh, that will be down in the description. Uh, if you have any further comments or suggestions, questions, anything, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below, and uh, I'll check back once in a while and try to answer those. All right, hope, hope you got something out of this, and have a good day.